Members of post-slavery communities have adapted ways of surviving for generations, and yet have found themselves more likely to go to prison than college, between six and 12 times more likely to be admitted to psychiatric hospitals. Dr. Kwame McKenzie posits the day-to-day -day grind of racism, abuse, and self-medication with drugs and drink contributes to the stresses that push Caribbean people to the doors of the acute psychiatric services. In the United Kingdom, Fletchman Smith believes that there is much to do in order to overcome the legacies of slavery that has been embedded in family and social relationships. Caribbean children interpret the silence about great-grandparental enslavement as shameful and maintain the silence. They soon learn that it is an awkward and an embarrassing conversation and so protect parents by not mentioning it, yet suffer from the ignorance of not knowing their family history and how it fits in with the greater black community. African-American therapists have long made the link between present-day problems in black families and the dysfunctional position that they're in for over 300 years. How family functioning and the psychological development has been affected is something we're yet to uncover in the UK. And I think that we've come to it a bit slowly. It's taken us a long time to get here. The Americans have been worrying about this for over 15 or 20 years. The first British publication to address the issue, daring to work with internalized racism, it caused a stir among black and white therapists. Black therapists were saying, is she saying that's about us, that there we've got prop that we've got problems? Yes, she was. And yes, we have. How can we how can we have endured that without having problems? We can't have it both ways. We can't say we suffered and we can't say we have no problems. We got problems. <laughs> As professionals, we might have to go beyond the usual presenting issues of family conflict, truancy, eating disorders, child abuse, delinquency, the usual red flags of family problems, to be curious about family trauma and repeated patterns. Who is used to and familiar with these issues as family, ther family therapists will look beyond some of the presenting problems because they will get the whole group together and have the opportunity to do that exploration. In individual therapy, it's a little bit more difficult to bring the family into the room. In many cases, we have not begun to understand the issues of British Caribbean families and therefore not able to pose the relevant questions. Not knowing the subtleties of self-hatred, internalized racism, shadism in families, and family construction prevents the therapist from picking up the threads of traumatic transmission. I'm saying that we are deficient. Many of us are deficient because we don't know. And we don't even know to ask the question because we don't know the questions we need to ask. It is most important that professionals are able to understand the historical context of their clients, families, and communities, and moreover, what implications there might be for themselves as practitioners. As much as black people have been harmed by slavery, harm has also been done to white people more than anything else, is the blindness to the damage. The fear of disturbing the hornet's nest. You know, if I as a white therapist talk about race, what on earth is going to happen? The damage <laughs> that has remained for white people has been the vestiges of psychological superiority. White psychological capital, and the inflated sense of European worth. In reality, white people are a minority on this earth, but you'd never believe it, would you? 